Hey folks, Clutch here, welcome in. And we're back once again, talking about the fastest way to make money in Farming Simulator 19. We're also gonna be going over some tips and tricks that you may not know on how to do things a little bit quicker in Farm Sim 19. So stick around, we have lots to talk about. Let's get to work, pit or batter. So we're talking about exactly how you make the most money quickly in Farming Simulator 19. Now, this came about since we started talking about the Farm Sim speed run. And well, what is the speed run you say? Well, this is a little bit of a challenge to see who can come in here on new farmer mode and be able to buy every single numbered field on Ravenport without using mods. There's a whole set of rules. We have it over in the Discord. Click down in the description. You'll find it there. And over on there, you're gonna find the rules to the farm some speed run. If you guys wanna take part, please come join us. I'd love to see some new times posted. But with some of the new strategies that have been posted there, I thought this might be a good time to talk about, once again, an update to the, the fastest ways to make money in Farming Simulator 19. So there are three things to keep in mind when you're talking about making money in Farming Simulator. Number one, right behind me, the farmyard. Your farmyard is something you gotta take in mind because this is costing you money. Number two, the lands you own and the crops that are on them. Those, of course, are all extremely relevant to how much money you're gonna make. And number three, well, the equipment you run and, well, how inefficient it is. And for example, here on Ravenport, guys, this, well, this farm yard right here, it is extremely inefficient. It's not a lot of storage and it's just buildings you can't really use for anything. It's costing you money, get rid of it all. Same with the fields. These are not great fields by any means. They're small, they're tough to work on. They're, they've got some large hillsides on them. You can sell them off. And the equipment we have here to base game is not great. It's very slow and inefficient, small, small sized. And it's just going to cost you a lot to run it all to get some stuff done. So, you know what? Probably time to sell it all. Now, before we dive too deep into this, guys, I just want to remind you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, of course. It goes a long way to help out the channel. And if you want to see more content like this for well, Farm Sim 19, as well as going Farm, Farm Sim 22, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Ring the bell as well so you don't miss anything here on the channel. So, let's knock out two things at the same point in time. Now, the farmyard, like I said, it's costing you money. And same with the equipment. The fence here, the New Holland, these are not great pieces of equipment. There's a lot better stuff out there. So, we're going to sell everything off just to reset ourselves and that should be a good start now as for the farmyard of course Ravenport has a lot of buildings that are pretty much unusable that we can sell off so from our farmhouse our shacks our sheds we'll get rid of all of those as well most other maps as well you're gonna find you can sell this stuff off and start over and get some cash for this stuff now just like that we've gone from $150,000 to $638,000 of course we don't own any equipment but that's fine we probably want to start with something different anyways so that's a great way to start now the other thing to note guys the silo you start with on most maps, if you're on far new farmer mode, you're gonna find that it has crops inside of it that you can go and sell off. For example, we can see here, well, our wheat, we've got 14,785 liters of wheat all the way down. All of these values are the crops that are sitting in that silo right now. And we can take them and truck them and sell them to, well, the various sell points. Now, we've got a pretty good price right now for wheat at $1,200 per thousand liters. So we could sell that at the Port Grain Elevator and truck it over there, and we'd make roughly $18,000 worth of wheat. Now, alternatively, we could just sell this off. We could go back into our products and we own this silo and we could sell this silo off. But the problem is, guys, if you do it this way, you're only gonna get the base price. So it's gonna give us 8,588 versus 18. We're gonna lose $10,000 based on this. So if you have time, Keep a truck, keep a trailer, and go and truck everything over to the silo and make money that way instead of just selling it off. You're gonna lose money doing this. Make sure you guys truck it to each independent silo. That way you'll make the most amount of money possible. And finally, guys, lastly, let's take care of our fields as well. Like I said, not very user-friendly fields down here, especially on this map. Let's get rid of those. We'll sell these fields off. We'll make the money back for that. So 210,000 and as well, 362,000 for those. Perfect, we have reset ourselves. Now we're ready to make some cash. So there we go. We've taken care of number one, the farm yard. We no longer own any kind of a farm yard, guys. That's going to be the first thing for starting to make up, uh, make up for the money that you might be losing from that. All right, that's fine. So number two, we need to talk about how are we going to start making money now? And there is kind of a cheeky little trick that you can use in order to do it quickly. And well, that is by utilizing, well, the AI that is planting other fields around the map and just buying the fields and harvesting them. This technique is called field flipping. And well, what we're gonna be doing is looking for fields such as 11 and eight that are both ready to be harvested right now. We can go into our menu, see that are ready to harvest, they're both good to go. 
Now, if we don't go and buy these fields, the computer will go in and eventually take care of these fields. It will disappear and be replanted. However, what we can do right now with the money we made from the farmyard is go in and buy this. For example, we'll buy field 11 for 680,000. Yes, we're gonna buy that. Now we own this property with the crop that's on it. Yes, that's right. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and harvest this and as soon as we're done harvesting it, we're gonna sell this back. So you're gonna make all the money from the crop that's on it without planting it. So we've made our 200 and some odd thousand dollars from the crop that's on it. Now what we're gonna do is gonna come back into our menu and we're simply gonna sell it back for the same price we paid for it. So you're essentially borrowing the field that already has the crop on it. Now the AI can come back in, they're gonna replant this and you're gonna start the whole process over again. You're just gonna sit there and wait for a time when the fields are all ready to go, buy them, sell them back and wait for them to be planted and redone again. Now, now there is one problem that goes with this go guys. Where, well, the big thing is they don't fertilize the fields typically. Most of the time you're gonna come in here, you're gonna find out that while the fields, the computer does, the replants, they're not gonna be fertilized. So you're gonna be losing a quite a bit of crop based on that. Now there are workarounds for this as well. You can take on contracts that will allow you to fertilize the fields. For instance, field 14 needs fertilizing right now. We could potentially take this contract, go over to field 14, fertilize this field, which will give it a fertilizer state so that when we do decide to flip this field, we'll gain the extra product of it. And then we're also going to gain the contract award for doing the fertilizing. So it's taking it on both ends. You can take the contract, fertilize the field, and then go and purchase the field once it's ready to be harvested and then sell it back again. So now we've talked about fields and we've talked about the farmland. The last thing we need to really dive into guys is the equipment. And for the most part, you're probably going to want to lease a lot of stuff if you want to maximize profits quickly. Now, when looking at leasing equipment, you do need to take into account how much you're going to be using it and how often you will be using it because there's different charges. For instance, for your trucks, you might be driving them quite a bit, so you may want to keep that and use it the whole time. Now, for example, harvesters, though, well, they don't tend to get used a lot of the time. They used for one crop and then they're parked and left alone for a long time. So, for instance, you would buy the ideal for almost $500,000 or you could lease it for, well, 24,000. That may be a better option. Now you are gonna get dinged almost $10,000 for every operating hour used. And then per day, if you use it for more than one day, 4,650 will be deducted from your bank account at midnight every day. So what you would do, you'd use it for one harvest. Whatever you were done your harvest, you would try to turn it to the shop and then start replanting and not have that cost, that daily cost, get rid of that daily cost and then your operating would be, well, per hour. So potentially maybe only one hour worth of actual use, return to the shop, you spent maybe $23,000, $24,000, and then you, you don't need it anymore. It's done, you're not dealing with that cost. Kind of a good way to get the best equipment early on. And since we're talking about returning things to the shop, guys, don't forget, you always are able to borrow money on your finance screen. You can borrow up to 500,000 in base game. That will start you off pretty good. Make sure you try to return all the money right before midnight as much as you can. So when midnight comes close, return as much money as you can to the bank because you're only charged interest once a day and it's always at midnight. So if you return that cash before midnight, you hose the banks and well, you can take the money back out right afterwards. So it's all good. So from here on out, we're going to be talking about some maybe a little bit cheeky ways to work a little bit faster in farming simulator. Now, I'm not going to advocate and say if you want to use these, you don't want to use those. It doesn't matter if you are interested in finding faster ways to farm here in farm sim. These are some interesting ideas and some interesting ways you can kind of make things go a little bit quicker for you. So our first little tricky trick or technique is called fast farming. And you can do this while doing some several different things, guys. One of them, for instance, though, is while planting. This will allow you to plant faster. For instance, right now we're maxed out at 11 miles per hour. But what we can do is we can trick this tractor into thinking that the planter is folded up and it will then drive at up to 26 miles per hour, which is the, the, the highest speed that this tractor will allow me to go. So how do you do this? Well, let's stop here. You can see we are in planting mode right now in the planter. And if it's a planter that allows it to fold up, and what I mean by fold up is it folds the arms up on the planting head such as this. Some kind of a planter like this, most of them that do this will allow you to do this simple little trick. You'll lower it back down, get it ready so it's in the planting position. You're gonna see that it's, it's all the way down, we'll turn it on. And what we do is we double tap whatever button you have assigned to fold that unit up. Not turn it off, but fold it. So you're going to want to pretend you're folding it up. And if you watch the top left-hand corner, I pretend to fold it up. You can see it's raised up off the ground now in the top left-hand corner, but it really hasn't lifted up. It does lift up a little bit, but that's tricked the tractor and it thinks it's folded. We're still planting. 
And now we can actually max out at 26 miles per hour or whatever the base speed is uh, for that, that tractor instead of what the speed is for the planting unit. So now we can plant at full speed. Now for our next trick, it is for harvesting fields, guys. That is the next one. Now what you can do here is slap your harvester on top of a low loader, lower the head down so it's ready to be in harvested mode, and then go. Now you have to make sure that your game settings have the automatic engine start option turned off so that the, the combine itself will stay on and running. That is one key factor to this. You'll be able to lower your head. Of course, we're playing with crop destruction off right now. So that is a quick way to make this happen. But you can now drive through your fields and this combine will work just totally fine. It's gonna grab the crops and we're gonna start harvesting without having to be in the spot where the, the harvester is driving. We can drive at the speed of the truck. Now, unfortunately, our harvester looks like it's slipped off a little bit. If it moves off of this trailer, it's gonna cause you a little bit of grief. But generally speaking, once you get going, things are gonna work out just perfect. And you can harvest at, well, 51 miles an hour right now, which is the max speed of our truck. Whatever the truck speed is, that's what you're gonna be able to harvest at. Now, there are a couple of little small caveats to this, this strategy, guys. Number one, we don't typically see the amount of, of product that's in the hopper of the harvester. Right now, we're seeing it. Typically, that doesn't happen. That seems to be hit and miss. I don't know the exact reason on why that shows up. Anyways, you will find that sometimes it won't show up and then you'll be, well, filling up your tank and not knowing it and not being paying, not being able to see exactly how much is in there. You can still tell from the top, of course, but you generally don't get the bar, the percentage. Secondly, you can't, of course, lower your trough out. That is something you're gonna have to jump out and do that. You can leave the trough out permanently and it's just fine. Then as soon as you find a truck to dump into, it will work and it'll dump out when it needs to. So that is, that is a solution to that. Now, the last little caveat, guys, of course, you cannot hire AI workers to do this. So you're still going to need to find trucks yourself and dump them in manually. You can't get an AI worker to harvest this for us. They will not, of course, recognize the field. Now, guys, this will work with a number of different harvesters, of course. And more interesting, I always found the cotton harvester was one of the interesting ones that this works with because cotton harvesting does take quite a while, as you're, you may be aware but you can just slap this onto a flatbed and then drive at 51 miles an hour and really get down to harvesting. You might miss some spots here and there uh, once you get up to speed. It really depends on how flat and how how well this truck is handling the, uh, the field itself. Once we get away from the headlands here, we should be better though. And once again, we've lost uh, the amount that we're currently filling that harvester, so we don't know how much is in there right now. It seems to have something to do with where it's sitting on the trailer and how it sits there. I haven't really determined that 100% yet, but anyways, this still does work. Now, of course, much like the other harvester, you're going to have to get out and unload this yourself. However, it works fairly well. As long as you have it pushed right up against the back of the trailer like this, it'll just do it. So that is an option there. But uh, interesting, interesting techniques to use with the low loader. And of course, you knew there was going to be more uses than what I've shown already. Um, I, I think the possibilities are almost endless with this, but yeah, it'll, it'll bail too. So if you're looking for another fast way to bail, this might be an interesting option for you. Now, some of it doesn't pick up great. I find you have to hit the right spot with this. If you hit any kind of bumps, it does not pick up very well. It will work with the low loaders as well, but just be aware that sometimes if you go a little bit too quick, you're gonna be missing some. So I'm not sure if it's maybe a capacity issue. Yeah, it seems like, yeah, there we go. See, now we're hitting it perfectly. It's just, you gotta hit it right in the right spot. And as soon as it starts coming out too quick, it's, it causes a bit of problems. But there we go. Look at this bale. Like I said, low loaders will work. Of course, this baler, you're going to want to use probably a square baler for this. The round baler is obviously you're going to have to get out and empty it every time. The square baler will just keep on pumping them out. But uh, there you go. If you got some nice flat land, this is a quick way to get some baling done. There we go. Let's pump those bales out. And then for her last little tricky trick, guys, the Crone Big M. You know what? You can make some silage bales pretty darn quick with this. Mat matched with the Vicon the fast bale wrapper. This will make things pretty interesting and pretty quick. Now, it, the interesting thing about the Crone is, guys, you can actually fast farm with this like we talked about earlier as well. But in the instance we're using it in right now, it's that will not work, unfortunately. I would love to be able to fast farm with the, uh, the bale wrapper. Unfortunately, that's not really an option. However, it will make bales at a pretty decent rate still. Now, we gotta make sure that we change, of course, our straw swath droppings. Make sure we're set on swath droppings and not wide. There we go. We're set up. And now we can go along and make bales at, you know what, a pretty decent rate. So it's about four to six miles an hour, depending on where you're sitting on the field. And this is just going to go around and cut and make bales for us and automatically unload. The nice thing about this particular baler, guys, is that it doesn't need to stop to get rid of the bales. Most of the other wrappers will, will have to stop to make these bales. This one here, well, it's just going to do it for us automatically. 
So, very quick way to make a bunch of bales. Uh, that's kind of cheeky a little bit because, well, that PTO is going nowhere. Now, of course, to make money with these bales, guys, you're going to need to pick the bales up, which is an added cost, of course. You need a trailer or something along the lines to move these. Now, you've got two options on Ravenport. Most maps generally, they may have one or two, but the main sale point is the barn area, basically, on this map. That price will fluctuate as you sell these, so be aware of that. So you'll sell them to that. That's a guaranteed price to place to sell them, of course. However, you can also purchase the BGA, which is right over that hillside. You need to purchase the BGA in Farm Sim 19 pretty much on every map, however. Just be aware that you do need to buy it. And then you can just bring, well, 50,000 liters at a time, basically, there. It maxes out at 50,000 liters, and there is a countdown on that. But you're guaranteed to get a certain rate, at least, on easy mode at $600 per thousand liters, at least. So not a bad price, but it just it's limiting the amount you can possibly bring into it. So be aware of that with the BGA. You probably already heard of that, though. Now, now, of course, guys, a lot of these strategies do throw realism out the window. I understand that. I don't want to hear it down in the, in the comments that it's not realistic. I get that. I know 100% it is. We're trying to find fastest ways to farm in Farming Sim 22 in this video. That's all this is. I understand. It's all good. Now, that being said, you can take some of the strategies as you wish and maybe use them, especially if you start throwing in certain mods into your game. You'll be able to find all sorts of different ways to make things go a little bit faster if you need them to. Just some other options out there uh, just to keep it keep it fresh and keep find, finding new ways to play farm sim. Is there anything that I missed? Is there anything, any other strategies I don't know about? Let me know down in the comments below. Is there something that we are not doing here yet? Because I'd love to hear from it. And of course, if you'd like to take care, take part in the farm sim speed run challenge, join us over in the Discord channel. Down in the description, you can join us there. And well, I'd love to see what your times are. But with all that being said, folks, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, slap a like on the way out. And folks, I will catch you next time. This is Clutch. Over and out.